Perfect. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. I know you've been waiting for this. I have. Um, we are really, really privileged today to have Karen Sanders and Rachel Andeko with us from Sanders IT. You know, they are going to talk to us about cryptocurrency. And I got to tell you guys, I know nothing about this, but if I hear my 27 year old daughter talk to me about it one more time, I'm going to scream. So, Rachel and Karen are going to help us understand. So, let me introduce them. Hey guys, welcome, hi, welcome. Hi, hi. And, you know, I want to say right off the bat before they start talking that I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a super complicated sort of, somebody told me it's a nerdy kind of engineering techie kind of thing. Would you agree? It is. It, it is. totally is. And um, I learned of cryptocurrency from Rachel. And I had had to ask her several times to dumb it down a little bit more for me. So it is, it's, it's complicated, but also once you get the idea of it and it's so popular now that I think it's worth exploring more. Okay. That's, I mean, we have to know because I'm walking around. I said, I finally feel like my mother that I'm a hundred, <laughs> like I have no idea what you are speaking for. Like my mother would say on those devices. So, um, so help us come into the 21st century. Can you just like tell me what is cryptocurrency? Can you explain? I mean, is that too big a question? No. I mean, cryptocurrency is a form of payment that can be exchanged for goods and services just like any other currency. Okay. What makes it unique though is that it's 100% digital it's encrypted and it's decentralized. That's that's the key. Okay, so, so let me ask a question. Decentralized meaning like no government is in charge of it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So unlike the US dollar, there's no central authority that manages and maintains the value of it. Um, the Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency. That's what most people are familiar with when they think of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And when that idea was first proposed in 2008, um, it was described as an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. Okay, so what I'm hearing now, so I'm just gonna, it's sort of like we have decided in the world that this dollar bill is worth money, but it really isn't. It's just a piece of paper. You know, exactly. just we've, we've attached value to it. Yeah, so the US dollar has value because you trust that it does. Right. Bitcoin has value because of the very complicated algorithms used to design it. From its inception, it was it was designed to solve some of those problems of paper money not actually having inherent value. Mm -hmm. Okay. So value based on proof instead of trust, I think is extremely cool. Um, when you use Bitcoin, when you buy it, sell it, spend it, use it in any way, that transaction is verified and recorded by everyone else who holds Bitcoin. It's a it's a public ledger and that prevents counterfeiting. So because all of these transactions are recorded, that is one of the things that gives Bitcoin value. If Karen owes me a hundred dollars and she says, I sent it. Did you not get it? I already sent it. There's really no question She's lying. She didn't send it because I can see that there would there would have been a transaction recorded of it leaving her wallet and arriving in mine. Those two events would be public, would be you can go to blockchain.info. Anyone can see the blockchain in live time as it goes. 
Okay, so that's what blockchain is, is it's like a giant graph of all these transactions? Yeah, it's like a big, huge database. Okay. All the transactions happening all the time. So like Rachel said, you know, I owed her a hundred dollars and I can say to her, don't you, don't you remember I, I, I paid you that and, and I paid you in twenties. And if she said that to me because I'm old and can't remember anything, I would say, okay, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and I don't, I just have to trust. That's where that trust comes in. But if she said, I gave it to him Bitcoin, then I could go back and if I wanted to, I could find that transaction. Yeah, there's no way for me to say that I sent the money if I didn't. I mean, I could she can say verbally that. say it. <laughs> you could say it, but uh, no, you didn't. Yeah, so there's no yeah. there's no dispute, and that that blockchain, like Karen was saying, it's it's just a very fancy database. So unlike a normal database, it it stores data in blocks that are chained together. So as new data comes in, it goes into a fresh block and it gets added to the chain. Everything is in chronological order. Um, when I buy a Tesla, that transaction will be recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain. And before that block gets added, everyone else in the blockchain has to verify it. So there's a lot of very fancy math that goes on, but basically, once it's verified that it's legitimate, it, the funds left my wallet mm -hmm. and they arrived at the dealership, then they'll give me the keys. There's no middleman, there's no third party, Visa, PayPal, Chase, auto, loan, none of that. So, okay, let me ask a couple questions. Do commercial stores or Teslas, or can you buy stuff with this? Absolutely. <coughs> Yeah, so I, I can go, but you can't go into Jewel and buy anything with it. No, but wait, Jewel has not no, accepted not. Bitcoin, as far as I'm aware right. right now. Who was the first? It was um, the first people to do that was uh, was it Bulk? I don't I don't know who the first was, but I know in 2014, Overstock.com. Overstock, that's it. They made headlines by being um, a major retailer. Mm -hmm to to accept bitcoin that that increased the price a lot at that time more people were getting on um i pay for some subscriptions that i have online in crypto um it's just can you cash it out can you go to a u.s bank to get mm -hmm. dollars for it not at a u.s bank you would you would go to an exchange. So like we have currency exchanges, mm -hmm. um, you know, if I travel, I usually take out US cash before I leave, fly with it. I don't know if that's recommended. And then, you know, I do the currency exchange when I get there. Right. Like at the airport or somewhere else. Right. Um, those exchanges, you know, they decide what their exchange rate fees are, right. stuff like that. So with a crypto exchange, there's usually fees. People are familiar with mm -hmm. Coinbase. Um, there's hundreds, but they usually pad on some of their own fees. Um, but overall, you can look up online and there should be a globally agreed upon exchange rate. Same thing from like the dollar to the euro while there's minor fees, there's still, what is the Euro worth right now in all these different currencies? You can look up what is Bitcoin worth right now in US, yen, I mean, et cetera. It, right, and it's just like, it, it fluctuates. It, it also fluctuates. It can be, you know, like right now, I'm not sure what it's worth, but it can be, for example, one Bitcoin could be worth 35,000 today. And tomorrow it could be worth 37,000. So kind of like the stock market, it, it fluctuates. All and, and all of these decisions are being made by an algorithm as opposed no. to humans? Or is it? 
we're going to kind of slow supply and demand, right? Yeah. If, if we want to talk about what determines the price, not the price. Well, like the rules, who decides that we're going to charge, you know, X amount to, turn it into dollars. I guess the person well, I mean, who's that's doing the exchange, that. That's the exchange, exchange rate, the fee. Yeah, that would be that would be based on the exchange. So Coinbase is known for having very high fees, but they're also a household name. They're it's allowed like, to. Like PayPal like, has fees. Yeah. Okay. If you're doing stocks, Chase has fees. Has okay. To to trade stocks. Um the, the cryptocurrency exchanges, just like a stock exchange, will have a fee as well. Yeah, they're providing a service, so right. they get to choose. Yeah. Um, it's usually a very tiny percentage. Okay, and then like you, so what I was hearing, though, too, was that the value is determined by... Well, the value would be determined by... A, a lot of things so demand. demand is like supply and demand is probably the biggest okay. um, it's incredibly difficult to create new bitcoins um that process is called mining and it's uses a lot of electricity and a lot of computer power um mm. that helps control supply mm -hmm. okay there's also Bitcoin and most all cryptocurrencies was designed from from the very beginning in its code, the way that it's written, there's a cap on how many Bitcoin will ever be in circulation. Okay. That also puts some type of checks and balances in place for um, inflation, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but demand, I think, is probably the biggest that we're seeing right now when when we talk about the um like the price spikes and drops over the past few years it's really been demand not supply it's been celebrities talking it up or talking it down major companies saying yeah we'll we'll accept it or or not um that's people Does are tesla very, accepted Tesla did until just a couple of days ago. Um, they got some pushback because creating new Bitcoins uses a lot of electricity. Oh, 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 okay. So you're going to make people unhappy regardless of what you do. So they... Paper versus electricity. I mean, you don't yeah. make money. Um, well... I mean, yeah, that's, like, whole, that's a whole nother. And just like stock. I mean, if someone says, like, for example, Elon, if he goes on Saturday Night Live and says, like, it's it's dumb and you shouldn't buy it, just like a stock. It's going right. to, you know, that's where you get your, your ups and your downs. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, yeah. So well, stock is sort of just the value of a company based on earnings. Right. And what they're producing public but, sentiment and pub, exactly. because you know i made a weirdly large amount of money the other day on amc that i probably should not have made <laughs> just because the company did nothing different but everyone on reddit decided let's drive the price up yeah again so that's always gonna come into play as well and the more companies that are accepting cryptocurrency and the more people that are using it, um, the more that demand goes up and the more mainstream it gets, the more stable the value will be. Um, one of the biggest flaws of fiat currency is that banks keep loaning out money that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And that type of financial system is kind of bound to fail eventually. Um, and right. cryptocurrency is des was designed specifically to address that. So okay. as you know, it was invented originally in 2008 because there was a need, people did not trust banks. 
Okay. Uh, a major rise after the pandemic in 2020. And I don't see it going anywhere. Honestly, I don't see the value becoming zero, um, especially as it becomes more stable mm -hmm. and more people are using it. Um, right now, the generally accepted estimate of where Bitcoin specifically would be for one Bitcoin in the next 10 years is around like $500,000. And obviously it depends on who you pull, but the range that we've seen is like a hundred thousand to most people are saying about 500,000 for one Bitcoin. You don't need to own a whole Bitcoin. Just like you don't need to own a whole dollar. Right. You like can have I, five, I, five cents. When she started talking to me about it, there's no way, for example, today, right now, as we speak, cause it could change in two seconds. Uh, a Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is worth uh, $36,900 and it just changed $94.57. So it it changes and it um, there's no way that I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got an extra 36 grand laying around. Right. But I might have an extra 50, thou, you know, not thousand, but 50 bucks. So I can buy a little chunk of that coin. Yeah, you could buy and, as and much or as little. And you can still, you know, make money or lose money or, you know, it's it's sort of like a monopoly pieces. You Definitely can buy a house, you buy yeah. the property, you can buy the house, then you can buy another house. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can build your, your hotel. Your <laughs> hotel. And, and I'm sitting here thinking yeah. about like a diamond. Who decided that diamonds have a value? Um, I just watched a documentary about it. De Beers. Right, but. Liter literally, they had a okay, meeting. Like, they that's decided. the point. People pay thousands of dollars for a diamond. And of course, you know, my husband's in the business, but it's really just a piece of a rock, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But. It's a pretty we rock. Just, but, it's yeah. a special <laughs> rock, but it is only because we place value on it. Yeah. And scarcity always comes into play, which mm -hmm. is something that Bitcoin planned for. So okay. having a cap and making it very hard to make more. Um, I don't know. Very well thought out, right? And not so all was it, a, was it a group? And I don't even know if you know the answer to this, but was it a group of people or who, where, where in the country in the world did it originate? There was, there was a paper uploaded to the internet, so the idea was outlined first by okay. it was signed. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, who has never been identified. So person, persons, we don't yeah. know. Mm. That's always kind of been a bit of Bitcoin lore. Um, but over a decade later, it's, I mean, the math works and it's going very, very strong. Um, but no, no one knows who, who the original person. Somebody put it out there and then other people gravitated to it. Yep. And people joined. read it and thought, yeah, this, this can work. We're, we're on board. Um, I mean, we're on board. Yeah. We both, we both hold crypto assets, tokens coins well i do know that my daughter my 27 year old has talks to me about it all the time mom you don't understand <laughs> so She's right she it's is right well this has you guys have i do now understand Excellent. i understand enough to not be like a deer in headlights like who what like you know i landed from another planet 
This is fascinating. And you guys are really uh, a tremendous asset to have here today to tell us about it. And we should probably circle back in a year and sure. see yeah. if, uh, what's new and if the rates are, I mean, I don't know if you call them rates or the value. So just before we sign off, based on proof as opposed to trust. That is the coolest thing. It's mathematical proof versus trust. Yep. I love that. I love that. Well, you guys have been great. If anybody, I'm just going to say one more thing about Sanders IT. If anybody needs help with their computers, their PCs, their and any businesses, especially they, you know, if you're a medium sized business and you don't have your own IT department, call Karen and Rachel. They're here to help and they are fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. You know, when you get somebody and you're like, you are not allowed to move, you are not allowed to go on vacation, I can't live my life without you, that's them. Anyway, thank you so much. Everybody, thank you, thank you for thank joining you. us. Have a fabulous weekend. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.